Welcome back, Akron fans, to the second match of Losers Round 1 bracket of the Akron 2013 Christmas Tournament. That is a big mouthful. I am Shadow 363. I am not a mouthful, thankfully. My name is actually not too hard to pronounce. But neither is Shalka or J. Raccoon, which is our next pair of players playing against each other. Now, one small caveat, one small warning. Apparently, this first replay, according to the game replay's description, might have playback issues. So if it has playback issues, fair warning. I think game two is supposed to be okay. And game three, I imagine, would also be okay. But game one, apparently, may not play back correctly. Just a fair warning. But we'll see. Anyway, it's going to be on Cataclysm Ridge, and we can begin now. Jerakun in the southwest corner of the map, Shalka in the northeast corner of the map. Shalka going for random. Shalka has been chosen to play Vekir. And Jerakun has choos to chosen to play Grekim. Like I said, Shalka is a random player, so the game chooses for him. What the game wants him to play is what he plays. He obeys the game. The game plays him. Well, that doesn't do too badly, but yeah, I've mentioned this before. Random is hard to do. I'm a bit surprised that Shalka has stuck to it. He's always been playing random in this game. It's just something that really I wouldn't recommend because, as I mentioned before, that's nine matches to deal with that you have to learn how to play. Because you have all the different species, and you have all their matchups, and you have both sides of each matchup, which means nine matchups, compared to three for everyone else. On the other hand, Jerakun choosing Blake Grekum only has to worry about the three matchups for Grekum. Which basically means Octopods, Octopods, and Octopods. And he is building Octopods, getting a resource processor on Q-Plasma in order to get the early Octopod. Because Octopods are just that useful. And getting an early Octo as well, possibly for an early fourth resource processor. Probably, because he doesn't have to worry about being rushed that quickly. And Shalka getting a very early, very early foundation. Oh my, is he going for a foundation rush? I mean, he's getting, he has a Q-Plasma RP after four Liquid Crystal RPs. That... Yes, that is, in fact, a Depot Rush. Looks like a Zion Pulsar will be coming in very shortly. This doesn't really work anymore. I've tried it myself. I, it might work if you really pull it off with the perfect timing, but... Really... Shalka is not... See, this worked before the change, before the even start change, where everyone starts with three RPs, because what you'd do is you'd have one QPRP, and, or one QPRP, one LCRP, and nothing else. And then you'd build the depot, and then you go from there. It was about a minute faster than it is with the even start. Because with the even start, you only start with 60 liquid crystal, as if you had built the three RPs. Which means you can't actually have that speed of building only two RPs, or even fewer, and then build from there. Which, by the way, was fully intentional. That was the whole reason for even start, was that you simply couldn't... It was simply to completely bypass that early part of the game where you only had one or two RPs, and it just caused some really wonky cheese strategies. Even start bypasses that completely, which means strategies like this are really tricky to pull off. Now, J. Raccoon doesn't have his Octopods up quite yet. He does have Octos going into attack, however. One of them has already reached the base, and the other two are going to be coming in shortly. And it looks like, actually, the one's already reached the base, getting rid of the Zion Veer before it becomes a Zion Pulsar. And that's really important, because that Zion Veer did become a Zion Pulsar. That was part of what happened. It looks like J. Raccoon, he does have his Octos coming in and dealing quite a bit of damage to... Depot is up. One Zion Pulsar is being built, but not the really fast one from the Zion Veer. Because, of course, Zion putting any imagery into the depot in order to build a vehicle with it, that's what makes things go quick. That's what makes build times go by very quickly, because the build time is already paid for halfway in the infantry. If the infantry is dead and can't be used to build, then you don't get the build time benefit. Which means that Shalka basically doesn't have any timing advantage here. I'll see how well Jericho is able to pull this off, but it looks like... Oh, boy. Nope, nothing's bad about this. No, never mind. Jericho is just being a little bit slow about getting in here. Jericho's jumping back to the unplayable past edge. Looks like he's... What is he worried about here? He's getting to the unplayable past edge. Oh, he is apparently going entirely for economy. Probably going to build an Octopod and not actually commit to this rush, even though the rush would have won him the game, I think. The three Octo rush would have probably... Yeah, with three Zion... Veer? Fighting against that with three Octos, or... Especially if an Octopod coming in later, and he just had streaming Octos coming in. I think he actually would have won this game. More Zion Veer are forthcoming, and it is definitely delaying Shalka's strategy. That's one big thing. Shalka does not have that rush available anymore. 
Or the rush timing is basically gone. And the Octopod should be up any moment now. Jericho, back to his point of view, the 131 mark. Has the Q Plasma, does not have the Liquid Crystal for an Octopod. He could build it if he wants to. And it looks like Shalka is still prepping for rush defense. Jericho's getting an Octopod very shortly. And at that point, the Zion Pulsar rush, if Shalka decides to go for it, is going to be useless. Shalka, on the other hand, is going to be... Let's see, he is setting himself up. Well, he's setting himself up for a depot. He's get this is a 3-3 mark, however. This is not rush timing. This is actually pretty much normal timing, or a little bit before normal timing. But Shalka can't even afford to build anything beyond this. Now, at this point, the foundation is mostly just for healing, not for the depot. Able to get... Able to keep everything alive. That is exactly what you want that foundation for with his Iron Veer. Now, Shalka getting his depot up, but he doesn't have enough Q-Plasma to use this. I suppose if he decides to jump all of these over to Q-Plasma and just get a ton of Q-Plasma, he might be able to turn about half of these Zion Veer into Zion Pulsars, which would be kind of funny. I mean, it'd be kind of interesting to see that because that would be a that would be a powerful counterattack at this point. But I think J.R. he's not worried about that. He has his Octopod up. It's not going to happen. Shalka's not going to be sending in a counterattack like that. It would be really cool if he did, and actually, I'd almost recommend it. Just at the very least, it's game one. If he loses, well, he has two more games he can get back from. But also because at this point, he has all these Zion Veer. He has a depot. He just needs the Q-Plasma to get the Zion Pulsars. And once he has that, he can just get a bunch of Zion Pulsars inside the base. And Jericoon wouldn't expect that. But instead, no, he's sending in Zion Veer, which isn't going to help too much. The Octopod can kill them, and they are now dead. Because those Zion Veer are too weak. Zion Veer cannot fight Octopods. Not like this, anyway. Not in this situation. Not in the, with this way it's... They're coming in. And especially not Test Veer. They have no chance whatsoever. And more Zion Veer are coming in. No, this is the wrong way of going about it. Shalka, he could have thrown them all into Zion Pulsars and then attacked with that. And that would have won him the game. Or at least put him farther ahead. Now, Jericho at this point, getting more Octopods. But six Zion, six Zion Pulsars would do it. That would that would finish it off. But nope, only one Zion Pulsar so far. And Shalka sending that in alongside with the Zion Veer. Yeah, I just don't get this. I really don't get understand why he did it this way. Admittedly, he doesn't have a whole lot of resources, so we can't easily do that. But, like I said, just teleport all your RPs over to Q-Plasma. At the very least, it would have been funny. It would have been an interesting and entertaining Game 1. That's for sure. Because Game 1, you can do crazy things. You can do whatever you want, pretty much. Because if you lose, well, you got Game 2 and Game 3. Well, assuming you win Game 2. But... And if you win, well, hey, you've thrown your opponent completely off balance. Because you won with something completely unconventional and unexpected. And now your opponent doesn't know what to do. They're scrambling, and they've already lost one game. If they lose the next, you can go for a safe strategy the next time. Or you can just go for another crazy strategy because you're one game ahead. And at that point, your opponent's completely off kilter and doesn't know what to do. They just win by psychology. But I don't think Shalka's planning on doing that. I mean, this is still a little bit odd. Now, if he builds a foundation, and then build another depot right by J. Raccoon's base. That might be interesting, but I doubt that's going to happen, and actually that would probably be a bit too risky. As it stands, that Octopod actually will probably kill off all these forces before they're able to do anything. The next batch, the Zion Veer and Zion Pulsars that are coming in, those will have a bit of a chance. But even then, I really don't agree with what Chalka did here. I really don't. And I don't think he'll build a depot here, and I wouldn't recommend doing so. That would be a lot of Q-Plasma down the drain. He doesn't have a lot of Q-Plasma income at this point. Although this Octopod... Ooh, the Octopod actually was taking a lot of damage. Looks like Jericho moving back from his backside of his base over with his Octopod, however. Going, attacking from there, possibly through the back door of Jericho's... No, not the back door of Jericho's base. Going through the south side of Jericho's base. Not the south tiny entrance, but the south main entrance. No real defenses, though, so Shalka quite open. Jericho going to be moving, marching in there, and I just said that that was Jericho's base. It is Shalka's base. And Shalka losing a bunch of Zion Veer, not paying much attention to this. He needs to get them out of the way, but he's not doing so. And these Zion Pulsars are not helping out. Now is the perfect time. They need to go down south in order to deal with this Octopod. The Zion Pulsar, or Shin, Pul Shin Veer, rather, can deal with it. The Zion Pulsars could have helped out, dealt a lot more damage. Shalka is not making the most of what he has right now. I can tell he was trying to go for a rush earlier, but it looks like at this point he has stopped committing to that. And at this point, this Octopod is dead. It did move a bit too far forward. Jericho at... About 30 seconds down from here. In fact, has not changed this. These Zion Veer are going to kill the Octopod. It is distracted long enough that enough Zion Veer can kill it. Like I said, it doesn't really matter of how it came in. The Octopod's at this odd angle, so the Zion Veer had the shadow of the mountain to deal with. 
they can use that to help them out. Well, okay, not really. It's, more, it's a vision question, not a hitting question. Octobots can, of course, hit over mountains, no problem. But it can't, they can't see over mountains very well. So Jay Raccoon is actually in a semi-vulnerable state. He has to pull back. He can't attack easily, but his main base is not vulnerable. If he, like I said, if this, if these Zion Viewers were all Zion Pulsers, Shalka would have would be winning the game right now. But they are not. However, this foundation will probably become an aerial control center, and he does have Zion Turchers, which aren't moving in, but he is building some more forces here and there. It's just, it's kind of scattered. It's kind of disorganized. Shalka's not setting up a great constant stream of production, and he is throwing a lot of his forces into harm's way, and since he doesn't have skip teleport, this is actually really risky. He's losing, a, he's going to be losing a lot here, and that primarily is imagery that could have gone into building vehicles, long in places, that opportunity is long gone. Getting rid of some octopods, which isn't a bad idea, but these five octopods are going to completely tear apart these Zion Pulses. There's, the Zion Pulses are no match for them. All they can really do is slightly damage the Octopods, but there's half a dozen Octopods here. At this point, Jericoon going for a counterattack would probably win the game. Even with an aerial control center, the air units simply aren't going to be enough in number. These Octopods could win if Jericoon attacks right now. I keep saying this, because this is often happening in these games, that the players have some opportunity that they can take that will basically win them the game, because their opponent invested a lot of... Basically, their opponent invested a lot of resources in attacking, didn't at the same time use resources they had back home to build up for the next attack, build up for their economy, and otherwise set themselves up. So, that is, I think once they've done that, if they haven't set themselves up afterwards for follow-up or just for defense or dealing with a counterattack, that counterattack is going to be very strong, and Shalka has not done that, and it looks like Jericoon is aware of this. He's actually taking advantage of this, going in, and that is going to be powerful. That should probably deal with it. I think Shalka will probably lose the game at that point. Although I keep saying that, and at this point, such things have not yet come to pass. So Shalka is going. Hmm. Well, Jericoon is able to actually get rid of these Octopods pretty easily. No detectors are in place, but Faros are going to be built fairly soon. Yato gone in progen mode, and Octopods coming up along here, getting rid of resource processors, and Shalka about 20 seconds down from here. That 20 seconds is actually pretty big. Shin Churcher coming in, uh, not that big, no, never mind. The Shin Churcher won't be able to kill more than maybe one Octopod before it goes down itself. That one Octopod looks like, nope, not even. Although, point should point out, Depot Heal is there, it is powerful. There's one thing that's going to work against Jericho at this point, is the fact that the Depot can heal units. But... Jericoon still has an advantageous position when it comes to the number of units he has. No, he doesn't. Never mind. Some of his units are out of position. These five Octopods here getting away from these last two, and those last two are going to go down to the Shin Turcher. At the same time, the Zion Turcher is continuing to provide some distraction. Jericoon can finally detect it, but it's still not great. Jericoon about 10 seconds down from there. It's finally able to, like I said, detect... He's finally able to detect the Zion Turcher, but still, the main thing is Jericoon... Lost, just lost some of his Octopods due to being out of position. And another Shin Church is about to get heavily damaged. Probably not go down. Shalka can still Depot heal. And he's still getting Foundation healing as well. And it looks like Shalka, jumping from his point of view, he is Depot healing. Actually, Depot healed that Shin Church pretty early on, but he is losing more and more economy. At this point, he actually has no, one active resource processor. One act, sorry, two, both of them in Liquid Crystal. Shalka's really behind in economy. And J Raccoon. Is he taking advantage of this? Is he rebuilding his economy? He is rebuilding his army. He is making sure that he has a decent-sized army just in case a counterattack comes in. But at this point, even with that, Jericoon is in a pretty good spot. He is dealing a fair amount of damage, making sure that Shalka is not able to do too much, but at the same time, doesn't have a whole lot to deal with the Shin Churchers the most efficiently. That is the one thing. Shalka is clearly trying to make sure he's healing them up. And another Shin Churcher going into the depot. So the Shin Churchers are basically taking no damage. The Octopods are slowly dying. The main thing to destroy is the resource processor and possibly the buildings over in the base. That's the only thing that can really go down permanently. And Jericho, from his point of view, he appears to realize that, but it looks like a lot of the resource processors managed to teleport out of the way before anything changed. However, he is going in. He is attacking the... Or he was going to attack the Annex, but no, unfortunately not focusing enough on what he should be attacking. The depot heal is huge. On the other hand, Jericoon is prepared for a counterattack. If those Shin Turchers come in to counterattack, he will deal with them. 
getting advanced charges as well so we can easily get sepi pods and his economy is very healthy although it will okay it was very healthy now he's just lost all of his liquid crystal income this box only has six more pulls left it only has 48 liquid crystal left so these rps have to move they actually probably should have moved sooner but the thing is grecum rps cannot move quite so quickly as vecchier ones can which means Jericoon's going to be slightly behind in economy. Very slightly. Shalka has actually managed to get a bit ahead on this one. However, Shalka, he is sending in a bit of a counterattack, getting Chin Churchers over. But like I said, J. Raccoon is prepared for this. Although, that being said, Jericoon actually, I don't see his preparations. Where are his preparations? Okay, he does have this. Shalka's just a minute up from there. So there's no preparations that are actually visible. But they do exist. Jumping back a minute to the 1241 mark, we do see that... J Raccoon has his preparations in place. Everything's in place, and Sepi Pods are coming as well, which means Shalka will lose this Teth Churcher. Shalka will also lose the Teth, the Chin Churchers once they get close, and there's no Deeple Heal nearby, and I don't think these guys have Skip Teleport. No, they do. Death Churcher does have Skip Teleport. The Shin Churchers do not. The Shin Churchers will not be able to escape if they need to. The Teth Churcher will be... F Actually, the Teth Churcher doesn't have it either. In fact, I'm not sure exactly what's going on. Why... That has skipped, but basically, no, the Tether does not have skip teleport. And Shalka is really not in a great position to attack right now. At this point, there's just too much defense, and Jericho is fully aware of this. He's actually moving all of his units in a position to counter that Teth Turcher before it comes in, before it deals with him, so yeah, Teth Turcher's dead. Basically. Wouldn't even get a chance to attack too long before it just gets hit by the Octopods and Faros. Or it would, anyway. Looks like they're prepping for an attack. There we go. Now they're getting a defensive position. And down goes that Teth Turcher. It really can't escape. So once that's out of the way, then it looks like the Shin Churchers are trying to do what they can against the, the resource processors. And this is the one thing, is that these heavy pods should go north to deal with the Shin Churchers. This is the thing, is that Jericho has enough forces he can actually do this. Shalka does not. He threw away all of his forces at the beginning of the game. That's a huge disadvantage. Massive disadvantage, especially since, like I said, could have, this could have been all Pulsar class. They could have won the game at that point, but massive disadvantage because he lost all his forces. You do not want to lose units as Vecchio, and he has just lost. Well, he lost the Teth Turcher, and he's on track to lose these Shin Turchers. Jericoon does not have the Chrono Energy to actually deal with that, though. That's the one thing Jericoon basically is a small mercy to Shalka right now. Jericoon cannot kill these because he didn't have the CE to do that. He didn't. He can't move them. He cannot give the order to kill the Shin Turchers. That is the one thing that kept Shalka alive there. Otherwise, Shalka would have had no army. And even with that, Jericoon just has such an army advantage, can easily deal with anything that Shalka throws at him, that Jericoon basically hasn't anything to worry about. He did try to intercept, however, and failed to do so. Finding, however, the expansion that was being built, Shalka's early expansion attempts, those are being destroyed, but at the same time, so are J Raccoons, and Jericoon's still slightly behind in economy. So Shalka, I mean, Jericho does have these RPs over the north. He just, the RPs in the south are being destroyed. Shalka has more active RPs in his bases across everything. He has five LCRPs and two QPRPs. While J. Raccoon now has two LCRP or four LCRPs and four QPRPs. But he did take some damage on them. He did lose one. At the same time, though, J. Raccoon moving in. He is getting his forces once again in a position to deal with everything that's been sent at him. But also, once again, he has no Chrono Energy with which to do so, so he can't actually deal with all of this. And it looks like he is not macroing near the present, so he's losing a lot of Chrono Energy, just building up the forces that he needs in order to actually attack with. Jericoon also is floating a lot of a lot of Q Plasma. I don't know if he's planning on getting Chrono Porting anytime soon. It is important to note that that's the case. And Zebby Buzz are coming into dread. Well, okay, this Zion Church was not a problem at that point. Getting destroyed pretty quickly, Shalka cannot save it. So Shalka basically lost that Zion Turcher for no real reason. Although it looks like he isn't actually... No, he is ultimately going to lose it. There was no reason to lose that Zion Turcher. At the same time, Jericoon moving in, getting rid of these Teth Turchers. The Shin Turchers are still a bit of a threat, but the Shin Teth Turchers are not. The Zion Pulsar, also still a bit of a threat, but the Octopods should have no problem dealing with that. And Far Pods would even be better if they came up, but... At this point, we have three Sepi Pods. That's more than enough, especially against Zion Pulsars. One of them is hitting the Zion Pulsar, is trying to take it out before it's able to do too much, but not focusing on it. Focusing more on the Teth Turcher, focusing more on just getting out of there. Looks like Jericho had moved it away, and Jericho very much concerned about making sure his defensive orders are handled properly. 
and it looks like he's actually doing very per unit rather than by the Arctic. It looks like he's commanding the Sepipod separately, which is going to cost a lot of CE. It might explain why he's so low on it. Now, Shalka, on the other hand, double from his point of view, Shalka does have hierarchy set up, but it's hard to say what he's doing with that beyond. I mean, he only has two units, two or three units can play at a time anyway. And decreasing, by the way. The number of units is, in fact, decreasing. Jerikun losing some heavy pods, however. He lost one, nearly lost a second, and moving the, that one into position to die. That heavy pod going down on the Shin Veer, but looks like Jerikun not even going to bother going with that outcome. Changing her up again, and Zion Pulsar to the north for Shalka. Heavy pods will be able to deal with that without issue. And the Ted Searcher to the south, not really happening. Looks like, actually, Shalka isn't even moving out with that. Wait, no, that's, that can't be right. Shalka did lose. No, Shalka permanently lost those. Or not. No, apparently he did not. Apparently he is actually still keeping that. No, never mind. He's rebuilt. He's building more Ted Turches. He lost the ones that were over here. Or he must have. Nope, apparently not. Okay. So. <sighs> really haven't done this in a while. It's been like a week and a half since I did it was, I was waiting on the losers bracket tournament matches being done and it took a little while for one of them. Not this one, by the way. It was Electro versus Sheridan. But now it's all been done, and we so moving on to this. But yeah, haven't, sorry, I haven't done Acron in a little while, so I apparently am losing a bit of track of what's going on. Doesn't really matter, though. What matters is what's happening right now, which is that Shalka going for Jericho's south side, while Jericho at the same time going for Shalka south. Both players trying to destroy each other's economy rather than protecting their own. And it looks like Jericho could, however, protect his own. He could get his Octopods in a position to protect his own, and possibly build some Seppies as well to do so. And getting Chronoporting as well, which means Jericho is in a very good spot to actually send back a bunch of these units once he gets Chronoporting to deal with everything being sent in and preemptively defend. They completely react to this. Looks like he is doing exactly that, sending one of the Seppipods over here and like a little Chronoport back. Or not. Nope. Not going to survive long enough for him to do that. He doesn't have the corner to do with which to do that, so he can't. He has the Q Plasma, but no Chrono Energy. Because once again, he is focused very heavily on the Amphilo Pass and burning basically all of his Chrono Energy with every order. Which leaves him pretty much unable to react at all. He ends up losing two of his LCRPs as well. He has more to the north, three to the north, well, five ultimately. One trying to land as well. The yeah, Jericoon getting pretty behind on economy as a result. Still has three QPRPs, but he lost the south expansion pretty much because he couldn't react to that. Now, able to still Chronoport back to deal with this. Ultimately, he won't lose too much, but he's, no, he's still going to lose quite a lot. I mean, these forces cannot really get in a position quickly enough to deal with it. And at the same time, these Sepipods are trying to do what they can to harass, but it's not enough. Nowhere near as much as Shalka is doing. As we can see, Jericoon, even with a Chronoport, is not able to do enough damage. Shalka is... Also unable to deal with the city plot, however. Shalka not quite able to finish that off. Jericho, from his point of view, is able to close up these RPs and Chronoport back. So he's Chronoport back all the Seppi pods, which means this green time will come along and we'll see a lot of damage being done to these RPs, which is not going to be defensible. At least once that third Seppi pod actually lands. Now, Shalka, from his point of view, he is attacking directly to the north, knowing that's a bit less defended, but then again, Jericho is Chronoporting now. Jericoon has Chronoporting, I should point out. I should also point out that so far the replay has actually apparently been completely fine. No signs of replay playback issues or anything like that, so it would appear that that is a fairly intermittent issue. I mean, it had appeared the issue was completely gone, but it was reported that it was a bit of an issue here. Looks fine at this point, nothing seems out of the ordinary. Players aren't stopping orders, aren't, aren't doing stupid orders, or doing stuff that's obviously wrong, but maybe the players watching it might, if they were watching it, might notice, oh, hey, this action didn't happen. This looks fine to me. Nothing looks out of place at this point. So Jericho, let's see, the green time wave has come along, and apparently that Sepipod did not actually deal the damage. Maybe it's on the red time. It looks like it is on the red time wave. Here's that arrival. It's the arrival probably right next to the RPs. No, this must be the one next to the RPs, because all the damage is being dealt there. Jericho moving right in front of the red time wave. His Sepipod here able to deal the damage it needs to, and the other Sepipod's actually able to defend, so it looks like he did manage to save one of his RPs. Ultimately, better than he had before. Better state than he had had before doing that, but even with that, it's... Well, a matter of the fact that he dealt more damage to Shaka. It looks like he dealt more damage to Shaka than Shaka did to him. We'll see once the red time wave comes along, I think. 
I think that's going to be the moment of truth for these RPs, whether or not they died. And Jerakun at the same, sorry, shots at the same time, going to the north and attacking with more Tetris and Shin Churchers. But these units are not in a good position. Jerakun already prepared to deal with them. This foundation, not not there to heal. They can't really heal up. It might be there to build more stuff. Jer Shaka might have been planning to expand there, but it's not there to heal anything up. There's really nothing that can be done there. None of the units went back to heal up on that foundation. There was no depot either for speed. And the Red Time Wave has not quite crossed this point, so we don't know exactly what's happened. But even then, Jerakun is just tearing apart Shalka's economy. And Shalka has no way of dealing with this. Jerakun can chronoport these units back to deal with the economy that much sooner. And it looks like apparently the Red Time Wave is not it either. So I guess that chronoport didn't quite pan out. I'm not quite sure what happened there. Very bizarre. Does not matter, however, because J Raccoon is destroying Shaka's entire economy, and Shaka damaging J Raccoon's, getting rid of one of the RPs, but it's not a big deal. J Raccoon, however, does not have actually any Q Plasma. He cannot corner port at this point. J Raccoon, that is a bit of a big deal. He doesn't have any Q Plasma income. He needs to get more. He has actually a couple RPs right now on Q Plasma. They haven't quite started harvesting yet, but now they are. That will be useful. But it almost doesn't matter. Jericho Nash has enough straight damage that he can just destroy Shalka. And Shalka doesn't have Chrono Porting, so he can't deal with this earlier on. He can't force Jericho. He can't keep Jericho honest by going back and just Chrono Porting around his forces. Jericho, however, can completely tear apart Shalka. And he doesn't even need to Chrono Port for that purpose. He is just going to win. And Shalka, on the other hand, does have this northern foundation. It's not doing much. It's. Auto defense does exist, but it can't actually reach this RP. It's on the back side of the crate. The crate is in the way. Apparently. And it looks like that is pretty much game. Ted Turcher coming in to try to deal with this, but Shaka pretty much can't. He has nothing really to deal with that at all. He has this foundation. He could turn it into an annex, and then from there turn it into another base. That's about it. But Jericho's fully aware that that's there. He knows he has this RP. You can see it's going on. He sees the, that is getting damaged. He probably can see the foundation with the RP. So, Jericho has basically won this game. Shalka has not realized it quite yet, but... Even with auto defense giving all these foundations a bit of annoyance factor, it's still not enough. They are all going down. The Annex going down, the Aerial Coast Center going down, and the last foundation going to go down soon after. And the, as it stands, he didn't even need to do this. And Jericho is chronoporting back to support himself. The Sogba doesn't even need to go back in time to do this. But it does. It does go back in time, and that will just seal it completely. Shalka has managed to take the north. He has torn apart the north at the 25-minute mark. Jerakun back to the 24-14 mark. Tearing apart Shalka's main base. And Shalka's economy. And Shalka basically only has this much money. 271 LC, 181 QP, and a single foundation. He could rebuild. He might rebuild. He won't really benefit from rebuilding, to be honest. I mean, I don't even know. Is Jericho even going here? I mean, Jericho might just be... No, nah, I don't see what Shaka could possibly do. I think this might be where there's some deviation. This looks... Okay, this looks fishy. But, no, even with that... Yeah, this looks a bit fishy. Shaka, Shaka would be rebuilding. So, I'd say that this part kind of deviates a bit. But I think we kind of got the gist of what happened. Jericho just won with Chrono Boarding. And it looks like Jericho had to defend it a little bit in the original game. But it really doesn't matter because I like guess this must have rebuilt into a proper base. That probably looks like that was a deviation point. This would have built into a proper base. Jericho would have had to defend against this and then would have gone to attack it. And he probably goes to attack it pretty much now. Or would have, but no. So that is basically game. Shaka. Loses game one, Jericho wins game one. We'll just have to wait until the game is properly over before that all gets sorted. And once that happens, then yeah, this this must have. Not sure why that happens though. I I was under the impression that all the replay bugs were fixed, so I'm quite surprised and unpleasantly so that there would appear to still be some playback issues. And there we go. There is the final bit. Jericho going in for the kill, and Shalka at this point has. Essentially lost it. That is the game. And okay, apparently the game had not quite caught up to my speed ups. But yes, the game is pretty much done. Not sure where the surrender is. 
And Jericho is confirming that this is in fact the the issue. This is in fact the divergence between the real game is Shalka's rebuild attempt, which looks like it was given the way Jericho is moving, partially successful. Actually managed to get some damage in, managed to keep Jericho on his toes, but ultimately did not manage to actually work out. And it would appear that maybe Shalka rebuilt somewhere else as well, because the game is still ongoing. But I think that's about it. I think Jericho is. We should be done here pretty soon. Yeah, I imagine Jericho had to deal with a lot of rebuilt bases. Doc was just trying to keep himself alive as long as possible in game one, which kinda doesn't make sense. And it. Yeah, Jericho is pointing out that all the interesting bits of the game were shown, so we are good. So, audience. Be glad, the replay was slightly messed up, but the important parts you got to see, I got to see, we all got to see, so no big, well, okay, some loss. It is disconcerting, but still salvageable. Once the game is actually over. Which should be pretty much now, according to the time, the game length. Really, it should be any second now. Going, going. Of course, five times is not actually five times anymore. I think two times is the fastest I can go right now. Seriously, people, if you have lost the game, if you have lost the game, please throw in the towel. Say GG. It makes your opponent's life easier, and it makes the future caster's life easier. There we go. Game over, although it didn't get marked off in the winner tournament thing here. Oh, well. Anyway. So we'll be back with game two shortly, which apparently does not have any such corruption issues. So please stay tuned. Sorry about the bit of a wait at the end. Welcome back Akron fans to the second match of the second series of Losers Round 1. Shalka versus J Raccoon. We saw Shalka and J Raccoon go at it for about half an hour just now. And unfortunately the last few minutes were a bit off because the replay playback was a little bit off. It's J Raccoon suspects that maybe he's got some mod attempt file that's hanging around. To which I say, why are you not playing off a clean build? Because, yeah, if you have if you're Although actually that shouldn't matter, because he wasn't hosting. At any rate. On to the second game, which is going to be an Overgrown Citadel, which has apparently no re reported problems. And let's get started right now. So, starting out with J Raccoon on the west side of the map, and Shalka on the east side of the map. Shalka has been chosen once again to play Vekir, while J Raccoon probably going to choose again to play Grekim, because he likes that species. Excuse me, sorry. He likes Grekim, and he likes them a lot. And Jericho, on the other hand, likes... Sorry, Shalka, on the other hand, likes to be told what to do. And he's being told to play Vekir, and that is what he shall do. We'll see how he does this game. Last game, there were a lot of wasted opportunities, which were kind of unfortunate. This game on Overgrown Citadel, there simply isn't as much room for wasting an opportunity. Pretty much, if you waste an opportunity, you're dead. You've lost the game. Because, as you can see, the map, as we've shown before, is quite small. It's actually come up a lot in this tournament. And for a random tournament, it's surprising how often this come up. I guess no one really decided to opt out of this one. Because that's how it worked. Each player had two opt-outs. Didn't necessarily have to be different maps. So you could hypothetically have a pool of eight. Out of ten maps, I should mention. So you could have a pool from six to eight, depending on how many overlaps there were in the opt-outs. Oh, actually, to ten, even, if neither player opted out. And from there, it would choose randomly. Surprisingly, Overgrown Citadel has come up a fair amount, as is Cataclysm Ridge. As is Tomb of Heroes. Those maps seem to be popping up all the time. Everyone, apparently, no one opted them out, and they just keep randomly popping up. Shalka is going for pretty quick inventory, which is a good idea, against Grekim, and as you can see, it's paying off, because Grekim is going to go for an early Octa Rush, as they just did. On a map like this, that is going to happen. You can count on it. Jericho not even going for an early Octopod, he's just going straight for Octos. I'm not sure if he's even going to build RPs at this point. It looks like he's just trying to press with Octos until finally Shalka gives. We'll see if it pans out that way, though. Shalka is losing some of his forces, but not a whole lot. He lost one of his Zion Veer, but that's kind of how it goes. You build a couple Zion Veer, you lose a Zion Veer or two, you have a foundation to heal up, and it looks like Jericho is swapping around stuff a bit. He is going to be building Octopods. 
the resource processor is moving towards Q-Plasma, so Octopods are forthcoming. Jerricoon's not doing anything too unusual. Shock, on the other hand, does have his foundation up. He has his Zyanvir up. He has no more Zyanvir coming down the pipe, but he has more RPs. He has five RPs on Liquid Crystal, one on Q-Plasma. Actually, two on Q-Plasma. He is going to get vehicles quite soon. Shaka is ahead economically, and Jerakun, however, is also much, much further back. He's about four minutes down from where Shalka is, so we aren't seeing the most accurate comparison between the two at this point. Now, when Jerakun is focused, Shalka does have some infantry preparations. He's got... Yeah, that's about it. Infantry preparations, he has his RPs as they come in normally. And Jerakun, further in the future, has not actually done too much. Now, Jerakun has what he needs for the Octopod. He's going to build one Octopod, and it looks like that's about it until he starts building more RPs, if it gets to that point. I mean, if it gets to the point where he's building more QP RPs. But he can get one Octopod. Once he gets the money for doing so, it looks like Shaka is going to have to be... Is he going to get attacked still? I think Jerakun may have just let up in the attack entirely. And it looks like Jerakun's actually the one getting attacked instead. No, further up, Jerakun is attacking. He's... Not managing to kill anything, though. That Octo not able to kill a single thing. So it looks like Jeragoon did go out. He was aggressive. It didn't pay off. Hmm. Well, like I said, Shalka does have his defenses set up. He does have a Zion Turcher very quickly up. Not a Zion Pulsar. Which... Okay, there's a Zion Pulsar. I'm thinking, why is he not having a Zion Pulsar? Everyone builds Zion Pulsar first. He does have a Zion Pulsar. It's getting distracted by an Arcus. He's also attacking six minutes above the unplayable past. Which is bizarre. Actually, five minutes up from the Implable Past, which is still kind of bizarre. Because Yeriku now has at least four minutes to prep for this easily. And of course, five to prep for it at all. So Shalka is able to deal a fair amount of damage, but at this point, Yeriku, like I said, he's got his Octopod coming up. He's going to be able to Faro's up, because he knows his Iron Turcher is forthcoming. Unless Shalka's planning on using this as a feint and then attacking with a completely different set of units later on, though, honestly, not a whole lot of options, but he might. Not sure what he's planning on accomplishing with this. I mean, once the time waves come along and Jerakun has his defenses all set up, this attack is going to become less and less powerful. And Jerakun getting more and more cube plasma, he's going to get more octopods. We were at that stage of the game that I wasn't sure we were going to get to. We are, in fact, there. Jerakun deciding to focus on cube plasma and not focus on the production of further tech on liquid crystal, on getting more RPs. He just wants to keep himself alive, which is exactly what you want to do on a map like Overgrown Citadel, given its size. So. Okay, Shalka's apparently surprised by something. Not sure what. Not sure what he could be surprised by because at this point he's just attacking further in the future. Actually, it looks like. Oh, the Zion Turcher not following orders. Nope, it is following orders. Never mind. Nothing's changed. So, Shalka is. Maybe he's concerned. Maybe he lost a Zion Pulse or Zion Veer. It looks like he is taking some damage further in the, in the, near the Unplayable Past. Very close to the Unplayable Past. Oh, I see. He's moving forward with all the imagery rather than moving forward with the vehicles. That means, I think, at least the Zion Turcher is not going to be built because I believe one of those Zion Veers became the Zion Turcher. Yeah, that's a bit of a suicide move. I'm not sure. I think Shaka did not mean to do that. I'm guessing that it was a complete mistake on his part. He said it was a mistake, and he is correcting it. He is moving back. Looks like not too much has changed. Ultimately, he will be able to get the depot up. He will be able to get the Zion Turcher up. The imagery are not dead, although they are apparently... Desperately trying to die. But Shalka is able to rein them in. Rein in their suicidal tendencies. No, uh, no, maybe not. He... Not sure why they're in the center of the map. I think Shalka might be trying to scout out, might be trying to patrol, see what's going on, see if Jericho is rushing him. Not a bad idea, but at the same time... I'm pretty sure he used those guys to make Zion Turchers and Zion Pulsers. I'm pretty sure he needs them to get the vehicles that he had in order to keep the future going. Though admittedly, like I said, that could have been a feint would surprise me, though. I mean, yeah, I can see why it might be a feint and a counter feint, or he feints fainting it. This map is kind of all about mind games, given the size of it. You really can't get much of a macro game going. But that's not really going to help too much. The, the inventory are still dying. They Their desperate quest for death has apparently come to fruition, although admittedly they are managing to kill an octopod in the process. No, in fact, only the Zion Veer have succeeded in that quest. The Shinvir and Tethvir are, to their apparent disappointment, still alive. Jerakun, however, is moving his Octopods into a better position to 
Nope, not quite. He's, his Octopus is actually not really changing where they are, so ultimately not able to satisfy the wishes of the... the dying wishes, as it were, of the Veer here. So, Shalka is... Now he's getting his depot up. Apparently he had more Zion Veer. I guess those weren't the Zion Veer that he used. Those Zion Veer were spare. He didn't need them to build the Zion Turchers. He has a Zion Pulsar here. He has a Zion Turcher coming up. Looks like those were from Zion Veer he built up later. Now, where that Faro is, I'm a bit surprised why there is not a second Faro. He can't actually build another Faro right now. He's used the Seppi to build a Reef. He's getting another Seppi, but that Faro cannot be built at the moment. And it looks like these Veer class units were retreated, so Shalka ultimately did not lose them. Jerakun, kind of on the defensive, but still patrolling pretty well, which means the Octopods will fairly effectively deal with anything that comes in. It's going to be difficult for Shalka to actually get through here, especially since he doesn't have Skip Teleport. If he had Skip Teleport, he could go back here near the Antelope Fast Edge and destroy Jericho's entire economy. But he does not. He does not have such things, and as a result, he is not able to destroy this. And also, his Zion Turcher not moving forward to act as a spotter for the Zion Pulsar against the Octopods. But yeah, Skip Teleport would basically allow Shalka to get back here, and the Octopods would have no real easy way of dealing with that. Jericho could, of course, change their orders, but they couldn't easily patrol into that point, so... Yeah, not the easiest thing to do, and it looks like... That Zion Turch is going to try to do what it can, but there's not much it can do. And Zion Pulsar also trying to avoid dying, which is good, very wise to do, but Shalka at this point is... Looks like he's trying to push more to Merit's macro game. He is trying to get more economy going. Trying to keep Jericho in his base, and actually able to get rid of one of the Octopods for free, it looks like. Yep! The Octopod able to be taken out by Shalka's Zion Tercher for free. Jericho, he might be trying to save it, but I don't know. He looks like he's just going to lose it outright. No, it's going to it's gonna retreat. It's going to get out of there. Just barely getting out of there, healing up, using a lot of the Reef Energy to heal up, though. But it is going to heal up. It will stay alive. And Sepi Paws are coming in, and this is where it's going to turn around. This is where Shalka is going to lose his advantage. He's going to... Jericho's going to break out of here, losing that Octopod, however, and the other Octopod... Actually, that Octopod was taking damage before and getting healed, also taking more damage, and that Octopod's gone! So two Octopods left, that's all there is, and the healing energy is also pretty much spent. This Octopod is going to be around ha around two-thirds health for the rest of its life, at best. Assuming that its life is going to be as short as it appears. Though, like I said, Sepipod is here, that is the detector, and that is going to stop this Zion Turcher from being quite so cocky. Or at least it would have worn the fact that the Test Fear is close enough, as long as the Test Fear doesn't die. That's the thing, the Test Fear can't die. If it dies, then it's dead. Which I realize is a tautology, but it's more important that if it dies, then the Zion Turcher is dead. Though even now, the Zion Turcher able to get rid of that last Octopod, and it is going down. It is going to go down, but still able to get rid of two Octopods, and able to retreat as well. Though I think that's not likely to actually... No, it's permanent. No, Jericho cannot change that. That is permanent. That actually happened. No way around that. J-Raccoon really can't deal with this. And as we saw before, J-Raccoon has a bit of a weakness for sticking very close to the unplayable past, Edge, and not really able to deal with things if he can't spend any Chrono Energy, and he runs out pretty quickly. So, so with Shalka right now, we see is building more area, and it's getting a Shin Turcher just in case of the Pharopod. No Teth Turcher yet to actually kill the thing efficiently, but still able to spot it. That's important. Zion Pulsar to the north is going to be able to take care of this Reef if it wants to. The Reef has no healing energy. Still useful for tech, still scary for tech. And that Pharopod is not being dealt with. It could be dealt with, and here we go. The Teth, there are Teth Pulsars in here to deal with that, so Shalka is prepared more or less to deal with this. Does have Teth Pulsars, does have a Shin Turchin in position. Does have a Zion Turch as well, and that Pharopod not able to do much. J-Raccoon loses it. Or at least would if he didn't move it out of the way. Jump back in time about... 15 seconds down from there and move it out of the way, avoiding the attack, but at the same time, avoiding losing the Pharopod. Now, at the same time, he is building more Seppi Pods. He has no more economy. He's been running on 4 LC with 2 QP this entire time, while Shalka has been steadily expanding. Dog has actually had a pretty healthy economy this entire time, which for Vekir is necessary. You can't actually get away with having an unhealthy economy with Vekir. You can't easily with Grekum either, but it's easier than with Vekir. By far. Anyway, second reef is coming up, and it looks like Shalka actually ultimately going to lose that Zion Turcher, not able to retreat this time around. Something changed there, and that is not going to work out for him. Shalka is checking that out, realizing he lost his Zion Pulsar and Zion Turcher. I 
Don't think that changes anything. Everything he defended with, he built on the fly. So he's good there. His main base is fine. This far bot not being dealt with, I doubt he's aware of it. I mean, there's no way he'd easily be aware of it. But Schalke, moving out of position, he is getting into a position to actually deal with everything that Jericho has in his base, but he's not in a good position to deal with his Farapod. So as soon as Jericho realizes that the base is undefended, he's going to send that Farapod in, and it's going to be a terrifying sight for this Lone Zion Veer and all these RPs. Or at least it would be if the RPs could see, but they are not sentient. They cannot see. In contrast to the Grekum RPs, which are still the Octos they morphed into, or possibly contain the Octos they morphed, that morphed into them. Not entirely sure how that works, but they probably could see. But yeah, the Vecchi RPs can't. That doesn't matter to them. But still, it will be terrifying for Shalka because he'd be losing all of his RPs, which that's been his main advantage this entire game. He has had a pretty big economic advantage for most of this game. At this point, he's about two-thirds, or three-halves the economy. Actually, at this point, he's about double the economy of what Jericoon's had. But Jericoon knows now he can actually get away with this. He, or he should know at this point that he can get away with this. No direct attacks, however. The Reef energy is nearly spent. And with that, there's going to be basically no advantage to Jericoon. Jalka could attack at this point, and... I think he lost his Shin... No, it looks like he lost his Shin Torture in the process. So he can't easily attack at this point. But Jericoon, there we go. He has taken advantage of the opening, moving in with the Farapod, dealing a lot of damage to Shalka's base. And Shalka not counterattacking, which is not surprising. He probably would not survive such a counterattack. But he's also not defending, and the Farapod wisely moving back once the Shin Torture... The second Shin Torture has been built, and a Tether Torture being built. At this point, I think Shalka could go in for a full attack. And the Farapod actually going to run into... Jericho's forces, but sorry, Shalka's forces, but Shalka's forces are moving around, and one of the Teth Pulsers dying for no reason, the other one moving into a better position to deal with the Farapod, but still not good enough. The Farapod able to get into base, Jericho able to save it, but only slowly. And a Teth Torture to deal with, or try to deal with it, but the Shin Torture not in place to detect, so there's no way it can deal with it, and it goes down! It goes down very quickly. The Shin Torture has retreated as well. One of the Teth Pulsers that survived still inside this area, just to scout out, make sure no RPs there. But I think that's just because Shalka hasn't moved it back yet. Regrouping, Shalka prepares for a second assault, I guess. Certainly not a final assault. Not sure how well that's going to go, however. Shalka's moving a lot of his... Er, Jericho's moving a lot of his forces to the north. The south side is open, but at the same time, Shalka doesn't have enough to actually take Jericho's forces head on, and Jericho could easily... Never mind, Jericoon has actually changed everything up. He's going to the south, not to the north. Teth Pulsar trying to do a can, but nowhere near enough. While well, at the same time, Shin Torture and Teth Torture coming to try to help out. The Teth Torture actually out of position, not able to help out. And Shalka retreats, leaving the Teth Veer to with Doom, but saving the rest of his forces. Jericoon, despite having an economic disadvantage, has kept all, pretty much all of his units alive up to this point, except for one Octopod. While Shalka has lost a fair amount of his units over time, despite his economic advantage, is not translating that into a proper military advantage, not to mention he's floating a lot as well. Getting weapons, I, is he, I think he might be trying to go for a skip torpedo. I think he might just actually be going for that, not even, because weapons, that's all it does. Well, that and an Inceptor. He might be trying to get an Inceptor, although I really would doubt it, and I would not recommend it. But he might be going for that, and if he does, that would be, that would just be bizarre. Skip Torpedo is bizarre enough, given the cost, but this is... Well, we'll see. Weaponry is coming up right now. Shalka is about to research it, and there he goes, researching weaponry, continuing along with that. Not changing that at all. And this foundation hints to me that he's planning on building an Inceptor, but he has no Q-Plasma for that. Nowhere near enough. Not gonna happen. Now, Jericho, on the other hand, has such a large army that it's really not gonna matter. He can just move forward, moving in the north, getting rid of these Shin Churchers, and then moving straight into the base, and Shalk is not even going to be able to get weaponry up. Certainly not going to get an Inceptor up. Not even going to get the resources for an Inceptor. I think this foundation might just be for healing. And then, I guess after that, the Aerial Control Center could be used for Skip Torpedo. But once again, it's going to take him about two minutes to get the Q-Plasma for that. Possibly even more. In fact, he's not harvesting very much Q-Plasma at all, so yeah. Not sure what he intends to do with that. Oh, and apparently he's going to have to comp up anyway, so he's not even close to getting it. And there's the Sebi Pod harassing those Liquid Crystal RPs. Yeah, at this point, Jericoon has just managed to save up his army, avoid losing any of them, even despite the fact that he's, his Reef, they were pretty much out of energy. Actually, they still are. His Reefs are very low. One of his Reefs got back up to half energy, but the other one's spent. 
despite that, Jericho has pretty much lost, I think, two or three units this entire game. Shalka has lost his army about three times over. And this is the thing with Vector, you cannot lose your forces as Vector. If you lose your forces, it puts you that much further behind. Just because of the cost of their forces to their power. They're... With Depot Heal, they're... you actually have a chance, but without Depot Heal, without taking advantage of Depot Heal, you're basically done for. You can't actually make it work. And at this point, I think Jericho is just going for the kill. I don't see any way out of this. It looks like an attempt is being made, but the skip torpedo is not even close to being ready. I honestly don't know why weaponry is researched. Weaponry does not, unlike with CISO, aerospace for CISO gives Tornads and Lancers more powerful weapons, but weaponry for Vecure, or weapons rather, for Vecure, only provides super weapons and the Inceptor. Only provides the skip torpedo right here, and the construction of the Inceptor, provided you have an active comm hub, which Shalka does not. Which means Shalka basically wasted about two Shin Turchers, or a Teth Turcher and a Teth Pulsar's worth of money. Okay, it's just, yeah, around that much, yeah. He, he wasted the money he could have spent on making forces that actually would have had a chance of dealing with this. Not a great chance, but some chance nonetheless. I'm not sure what the purpose was. Like I said, for skip, the Skip Torpedo on its own would actually be okay. I mean, if he attacked with the Skip Torpedo right now, if he hit these guys with the Skip Torpedo, that would be very powerful. That would pay for itself. But he doesn't even have the money for it. He can't afford it at this point. And Jericho's probably not going to stick where he is. No, he's not. He is attacking the base directly. The only hope that Shalka has essentially involves nuking his own base. Once he gets the money for it, I don't think he's ever going to get the money for it. I think at this point, he has, he's not going to live long enough. He is not going to survive long enough to even see the day that his Skip Torpedo has a chance of being launched. This aerial control center going down, everything going down. Jericho finishing off the base, and Shalka will lose this series and be kicked. Well, be not kicked out of the tournament, but he's going to be out of the tournament. That's going to be it for him in the tournament. That is it for Shalka. He will be throwing in the towel very shortly, and Jericho will take that match and will remain in the tournament. Shalka, however, jumping a bit further in the future. I think he's trying to get Gate Tech. He's not. He's not throwing it in yet. He is getting gay tech. This green time is carrying his doom, but as is Jericoon fast forwarding. But with gay tech, he doesn't really even stop a chance. Jericoon actually moving forward just to be sure. Nicely done there. Jericoon jumping up to Shalka, knowing gay tech's going to come up, getting rid of any spare foundations, and still getting rid of the economy in the future just in case, just to prevent any acronal shenanigans. Very nicely done, J Raccoon. That's exactly what he needs to do. Gets rid of the Annex as well before Gate Tech is done. And Shalka basically has no way out of this. That was very cleverly done there, J Raccoon. Because that time it would not hit fast enough, but J Raccoon's forces were already in position to finish that off. Whew. Well, that was a nice way of finishing that off, J Raccoon. And Shalka just double checking, seeing where he went wrong, and I guess seeing the timings, but that is game. Shalka's basically about to throw in the towel, and once he does that, then that'll be it for tonight, because that's all I'm casting for tonight. I hope that tomorrow, possibly Thursday, I'll do the other two matches, and then that'll be the loser's round, and then we can go on to... I think loser's round two isn't quite done yet, so we'll go on to round three. The quarterfinals, actually. And then with that, that will be... Well, that'll probably be next week. But yeah, this is... This is it. Shalka just double-checking, seeing around the timeline that he has no forces left. And he is about to GG. He's about to GG. There we go. He is throwing the towel. Jerokun wins. Shalka loses. And that is game. That is match. That is series. And that is all for tonight. Though, Shalka is... The... Dog is out, Jericoon wins. Vermine versus Jericoon is in losers round two. And tomorrow or Thursday, we shall have Electro and Sheridan, as well as Haiku and myself. We shall see who wins. Am I still in the tournament? And between Electro and Sheridan, who is still in the tournament? Stay tuned for that tomorrow or Thursday. But for now, good night and thank you all for watching.